Hey everybody, this is Alex with uccx.net. Um, what I'm going to show you in this video is actually how to install the Unified Contact Center Express 7 on a Cisco approved Windows 2003 operating system. Um, this install takes probably about 30 minutes. Uh, it's pretty quick, pretty painless, um, but essentially all you need is a MCS server or if you watched my video before and you've virtualized your own MCS approved or Cisco approved MCS 2003 server operating system you can actually just run that in VMware uh, what I've got I've got the disk in the draw in the CD-ROM already and I'm gonna double click on it I'm gonna get a little splash screen let me know that the installer is about to start for unified uh, CCX now one of the things that I'm gonna warn you about ahead of time is that if you have CSA running you need to disable that um, good practice for that is to um, set it to manual um, underneath the services MC, MSC um, that way when the server restarts you don't have to worry about it potentially starting and messing something up the other thing too is that you can't run this in terminal services so anybody that would want to kick this off via RDP uh, you can't do that you need to either be I load in which in the case I am here or uh, potentially VNC is your other option splash screen will go through the check just to make sure that you have enough space on the disk and that you're not running it in a non-approved operating system um, now this is a pretty important thing here um, <laughs> I've had very limited success with installing contact center express with call manager express which is the router based call manager so 999 percent of the time I would always recommend doing this with uh, communications manager if you do choose to do call manager express it changes the GUI the web page for unified contact center express some of the options will not be there that you would normally see with the full-blown call manager integration uh, now this is a very important setting here, um, one that I wish they would change. Um, essentially this picks the language for CAD, which is the Cisco Agent Desktop, and CSD, which is the Cisco Supervisor Desktop. Uh, one thing to note here, this is set it and forget it. Whatever language you pick here, you cannot go back and change again later unless you respin the disk and basically format C colon and start over. Uh, this is one of my biggest gripes here. I wish it would support multi-language environment for multi-language uh, agents and supervisors, but that's what we have. Um, essentially, it's going to ask you if you want to review any of this uh, information, and we're going to click install. Uh, this is going to think for a little while, and then you'll notice it'll start installing uh, the program to the necessary folders. Now one of the things that this will do, um, and I do want to point out, is if you're not running this uh, in an HA environment or a high availability environment, it's actually going to install Microsoft MSDE, which is the embedded database for Microsoft. Uh, it's basically Microsoft's freeware um, database product. So that's what this is doing right here, is it's actually installing the desktop engine. There are some limitations with the desktop engine as far as uh, how much space can be in the database before the database just can't run anymore. I think off the top of my head it's like 4 gigs and maybe 6 gigs now. Um, check the SR&D. I'm pretty sure it'll be in there. Um, you will run into some issues with prompt uploads, uh, things like that, if you have too much data in your database. So be cognizant of that um, as your call center grows. Next thing you'll see here is it's actually going to install the Java 2 uh, runtime environment, the SC runtime environment. Um, be very careful with any type of Java update messages you might get on your server because if you do change the Java runtime engine or the Java 2 standard edition runtime environments on the contact center server, you can potentially screw it up. Uh, so just be cognizant of that as the patching goes on and as time moves on. Um, some of you guys that might remember the old call manager days uh, if you ever patched your uh, browser to a higher JRE uh, sometimes the call manager pages wouldn't work if you were on like call manager 3 or 4 but luckily we don't have to fool with that with call manager 5, 6, 7 or soon to be call manager 8 and what you'll notice as the install keeps going on is you'll see all these files being copied um, one thing I do want to point out is uh, there's a base install directory for the contact center express product so 
Um, essentially, anything that gets installed with Contact Center Express is always going to be installed under C colon program files WF Avid. Um, I've never had anybody explain to me what the WF means, but back in the old days before everything was unified, it was Avid was architecture for video voice and integrated data. So anybody that's been around since Call Manager three days has seen that acronym before. Um, essentially, what the disk is going to do, or essentially what the installer is doing right now, is just copying all the files, the prompts. Uh, the basic system scripts, the logging capability, all the Java files, and if you didn't know, Contact Center Express is written in Java, which is the underlying language, so any of you Java weenies out there, you might be able to reverse engineer a piece of it. Um, I've played around with it a little bit, so uh, that's essentially what it's doing now. Uh, it's going to take several minutes for this to go ahead and install, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. There's not much else to it. What you're going to need to do once you get the install done is go ahead and, uh, it's best practice, to, I would recommend rebooting the server. Um, it's actually going to tell you to reboot, I believe, so that's all it is to it. Um, next video, I'll pick it back up with the actual integration and the first time you log into the app admin page and you actually do the cluster setup, so we'll take it from there.